well, a well, a well, a well, a welcome back. May 31st, Flowers for Algernon, paragraph 171. Dr. Strauss thinks I'm working too hard. Dr. Meemer says I'm trying to cram a lifetime of research and thought into a few weeks. I know I should rest, but I'm driven on by something inside that won't let me stop. I've got to find the reason for the sharp regression in Algernon. I've got to know if and when it will happen to me. June 4th, paragraph 172. Letter to Dr. Strauss, copy, Dear Dr. Strauss, Under separate cover, I'm sending you a copy of my report entitled The Algernon-Gordon Effect, A Study of Structure and Function of Increased Intelligence, which I would like to have you read and have published. As you see, my experiments are completed. I've included in my report all of my formula, as well as a mathematical analysis in the appendix. Of course, these should be verified. Paragraph 176. Because of its importance to both you and Dr. Niemer, and need I say to myself too, I have checked and rechecked my results a dozen times in the hope of finding an error. I'm sorry to say the results must stand, yet for the sake of science, I'm grateful for the little bit that I here add to the knowledge of the function of the human mind and of the laws governing the artificial increase of human intelligence. I recall your once saying to me that an experimental failure or the disproving of a theory was as important to the advancement of learning as a success would be. I know now that this is true. I'm sorry, however, that my own contribution to the field must rest upon the ashes of the work of two men I regard so highly. Yours truly, Charlie Gordon, enclosed. So, take a look at slide 104. And if you have not yet had a chance, please make sure that you go to this slide now. All right, so this you just go in through um, Schoology, right? Once you're in Schoology, you just go to the core three, part of the school OG uh, program. And once you're in there, you go to this week's work. And once you're at this week's work, that'll take you straight to Flowers for Algernon. So if you have not opened this up on your computer, I'd really like you to follow along with question 14. Go to today's slides. Oops, whoopsie daisy, don't go to today's slides. Go to Flowers for Algernon right there. Boom, it'll take you right there. Please take the time to make sure that your computer's up to speed. All right, happy. So let's take a look. 14, in Flowers for Algernon, which of these themes are best supported by the allusion that the character named Fanny makes to the biblical story of Adam and Eve and the tree of knowledge? Choose two options. A, it is wrong to want something that you don't already have. B, nature is a source of spiritual comfort to human beings. C, people should not try to change what God has created. D, change can be unexpectedly frightening. And E, knowledge can be very powerful. So let's take a moment and cross out the obviously wrong ones. It is wrong to want something that you don't already have. Well, Fanny's story seemed to be a little antithetical to that, especially given what is happening. B, nature is a source of spiritual comfort to human beings. I haven't seen a blessed thing like that. B, you can get gone, right? Because we're trying to that the themes that are best supported, right? These are the themes, the message that are supported by that allusion to the Bible and the tree of knowledge, which we've gone over a few times. People should not try to change what God has created. Well, I think that's definitely what the religious Fanny is saying, right? Because it's about Fanny's allusion, right? And she brings it up for a reason. Uh, C, people should not try to change what God has created. Well, I can't count that one out because I know Charlie changed how he was born or how the state that he was in since his birth. Change can be unexpectedly frightening. Uh, I don't think that's what um, the story is about, uh, the allusion. Or knowledge can be very powerful. Mm, knowledge gets you disempowered in, in the Bible. The tree of knowledge gets them kicked out. So that leaves our two answers, A and C, because it's looking for two options. So A or C, either would work for slide 105. Take a moment, please, and make sure that 104 looks like this, and 105 looks like A or C.
So June 5th, I must not become emotional. The facts and the results of my own experiments are clear and the more sensational aspects of my own rapid climb cannot obscure the fact that the tripling of intelligence by surgical technique developed by doctors Strauss and Niemer must be viewed as having little or no practical applicability at the present time to the increase of human intelligence. As I review the records and data on Algernon, I see that although he is still in his physical infancy, he has regressed mentally. Motor activity is impaired. There's a general reduction of glandular activity, and there's an accelerated loss of coordination. There are also strong indications of progressive amnesia. As will be seen by my report, these and other uh, physical and mental deterioration syndromes can be predicted with statistically significant results by the application of my formula. The surgical stimulus to which we were both subjected has resulted in an intensification and acceleration of all mental processes. The unforeseen development, which I have taken to calling, or the liberty of calling, the Algernon-Gordon effect, is the logical extension of the entire intelligence speedup. The hypothesis here proven may be described simply in the following terms. Artificially increased intelligence deteriorates at a rate of time directly proportional to the quantity of the increase. In other words, the higher you go, the farther you fall. The quicker you go, you gain intelligence, the quicker you lose intelligence. I feel that this is in itself an important discovery. As long as I'm able to write, I'll continue to record my thoughts in these progress reports. It's one of my few pleasures. However, by all indications, my own mental deterioration will be very rapid. I have already begun to notice signs of emotional instability and forgetfulness, the first symptoms of the burnout. June 10th. Deterioration progressing. I've become absent-minded. Algernon died two days ago. Dissection shows my predictions were right. His brain had decreased in weight, and there was a general smoothing out of cerebral convolutions as well as a deepening and broadening of brain fissures. I guess the same thing is, or will soon, be happening to me. Now that it's definite, I don't want it to happen. I put Algernon's body in a cheese box and I buried him in the backyard and I cried. What I'd like you to do, please, is to get this check mark. It asks you how Daniel Keyes uses points of view to develop the theme and flowers for Algernon. Well, I'd like you to use this check mark and to put it above the cover to flowers for Algernon that you think is best. Is it this one here on the left, this one here in blue, this one here in a frame, or this one here on the right? Which is the best and why is it the best? What, how does it fit Charlie's point of view, especially at this, this point of the story where my man's crying because the mouse that represents him is, is D-E-A-D, right? And those are who he's getting flowers for eventually, I would imagine. Take a moment and do that now, please. All right. June 15th. Dr. Strauss came to see me again. I wouldn't open the door and I told him to go away. I want to be left to myself. I've become touchy and irritable. I feel the darkness closing in. I keep telling myself how important this introspective journal will be. It's a strange sensation to pick up a book that you've read and enjoyed just a few months ago and discover and discover that you don't remember it. I remembered how great I thought John Milton was, but when I picked up Paradise Lost, I couldn't understand it at all. I got so angry, I threw the book across the room. I've got to try to hold on to some of it, some of the things I've learned. Oh God, please don't take it all away. A quick note about John Milton's Paradise Lost. If you type it into Google, and you can certainly open up a tab and, and follow along with me now, if you like, you can open up Google and type in uh, Milton, Paradise Lost book cover, just to get a sense of what that story is about. It is about the fall of man when Satan comes and gets humankind or mankind into trouble and gets them kicked out. Uh, there's Satan traveling to earth. There's Satan traveling to earth. There's the snake going into the Garden of Eden. 
There's uh, and Satan sneaking around in Eden, right? So Paradise Lost goes right along with what Fanny was talking about earlier, right? When humankind got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. There's the angel escorting the first humans, Adam and Eve, out of the Garden of Eden. Bye! All right? Oh, there's Satan looking at the Garden of Eden. All right? So Paradise Lost is all about what Fanny was, was talking about earlier, which is you go against the will of God to gain knowledge, punishment will follow. And boy, punishment is coming down on Charlie quick now. So good job, y'all.